Now, did you know that our sun is actually green? Okay, okay, I'm kidding. But in reality, it's all colors you can imagine at the same time. Wait, what? I know it sounds like a joke, but I'm being serious, can't you tell? In fact, our sun contains absolutely all the waves of the light spectrum. It's simultaneously red, blue, green, yellow, you name it. Where do you think rainbows come from? When sunlight gets reflected off water droplets in the air, it splits into a bunch of colored waves that we can see individually. And when they're all together, we see a white ray of light. Our eyes are unable to perceive the concept of all colors at the same time, so their combination seems white to us. Wait, you might say, why white? Isn't the sun yellow? Yep, it's yellow too, but please don't stare at the sun just to make sure. It appears white when we see it from the International Space Station. This is the sun's real color as our eyes perceive it. The sun gets a yellowish hue when its rays get scattered in Earth's atmosphere. Our atmosphere doesn't let the blue rays of the spectrum pass very well. But the red ones? Hey, sure, why not? By the way, that's why the sky seems blue to us. The atmosphere scatters the blue color all over the place. During sunrise and sunset, short blue waves get reflected, but the long red ones reach us perfectly. That's why we see sunsets as pink, orange, or red. But what would happen if the sun had a different color? To answer this question, let's quickly repeat what we've learned. 1. The sun has the whole color spectrum in it. 2. Our atmosphere is like blue rays? No. Red rays? Anytime. So you probably already guessed what would happen if the sun was, let's say, red. The whole world would look like it does during sunsets. Not bad, huh? We wouldn't even have to wait for the evening to admire the scarlet sky. Orange water and a bright red moon. Yeah, it would be darker than what we're used to, but still not bad. Oh, by the way, one day, the sun will actually turn red. When its life comes to an end, it will expand and gradually turn into a red giant before finally burning out. But uh, it's not going to be so much fun for us. So let's hope we won't be around to see that moment. I know I won't. Hey, I've got a party to go to. Okay, now, what if the sun was green? Well, the truth is, the sun is green. So here's your dialogue. Wait, are you kidding me? Didn't you just say that it's white? Ooh, good job on that, by the way. Well, not exactly, bud. The sun just looks white, but technically, it has a temperature of around 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And the pink wavelength of the sun's spectrum corresponds to the green-blue hue. But to make sure that the sun is green, we need to drown out the rest of the visible spectrum. Then our atmosphere will let through a pure green color. And what'll happen then? Well, everything will be green. And everything will also be a bit darker. Well, face it, it's not easy being green. Okay, moving on. Now let's paint the sun blue. Blue stars actually do exist. They're called blue giants. Fortunately, our sun is not one of them. Why fortunately? Well, because if it was a blue giant, it would be a young, beautiful, unimaginably large, and very, very hot star. See, our red is hot, blue is cold logic doesn't apply to stars. The hottest stars are white and blue, and the coldest are yellow and red. Yeah, our sun is actually very cold compared to other stars. Now, take the average temperature in your city, but multiply it like by hundreds of thousands. Yeah, we're struggling with global warming here, but global burning? Eh, no thanks, blue giants. Anyway, let's imagine that the sun turned blue. How would we see the world? Surprisingly, nothing would change. Remember how I said that the atmosphere scatters blue light? That's why, in this case, everything would remain almost the same. Maybe the sky would get bluer, but we wouldn't see much difference. And finally, the darkest, pun intended, option. What if our sun turned black? Stock up on lamps and candles, because there is no more light. People use electricity all over the world 24-7. We also can't see the moon anymore. After all, we can observe it these days only because the sun's rays get reflected off of it. Now, the only thing we still have to illuminate our nights are stars, but they don't help us much. Good thing this scenario is totally unrealistic and there are no black stars, right? Well, yeah, there are no black stars. And still, our sun will eventually become completely black one day. And I don't mean a black hole. I'm talking about black dwarfs here. You've probably heard of white dwarfs. Maybe even seven dwarfs. 
When a star like our Sun is about to finish its life, it expands and turns into a red giant. And then, gradually losing its upper layers, it turns into white dwarfs. Since they no longer produce fuel, they slowly cool down. All that remains is a small core, living out its life and burning bright. And when the star cools down completely, right, it turns into a black dwarf. But you've probably never heard of them. Why? Because, surprise, surprise, they don't exist. And no, I was not lying. The thing is, a star needs about one quadrillion years to turn into a black dwarf. And our universe is still a baby. It's only about 14 billion years old. So no star has reached this stage yet. Even the most ancient of them still emit a little light. That's why black stars are just a theory. And it's unlikely that we'll ever see such a star at all. But remember the famous saying, the stars that we see at night are already ghosts because their light has reached us only now. Well, that's a myth. They're all still alive. Why am I telling you all this? Well, let's imagine that our sun turned into a black dwarf. The entire solar system would immediately get plunged into absolute darkness. It would also be terribly cold. The moon would leave its orbit and crash into Earth. Wait, no. Let's overlook this moment and assume we're still alive. Fortunately, we wouldn't freeze instantly, as you might think. Earth's core has its own temperature, more than 9,000 degrees. But the temperatures on the surface of the planet would still immediately drop to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The core would gradually cool down. Every two months, its temperature would drop by two times. In just two months, Earth's surface temperature would be minus 190 degrees, and in a year, it would reach minus 450 degrees. Most plants would disappear pretty quickly, not because of the cold, but because of the lack of photosynthesis. Others would live a little longer thanks to the oxygen still remaining in the atmosphere. And, oddly enough, trees would survive for a very long time. They have a slow metabolism and get sugar from the ground. The upper layer of the oceans would freeze very quickly. Fortunately, this thick crust of ice would insulate deep waters, so the entire ocean wouldn't freeze for some time. Marine creatures would be doing pretty well. They existed long before us and are already used to crazy temperature changes, the lack of oxygen and food, huge pressures, and other joys of deep sea life. And what about us humans? Well, first of all, we'd start getting sick. Without vitamin D, people would face a huge number of different health problems. Also, our bodies need sunlight to produce melatonin. This melatonin helps us understand when we should go to bed and wake up. If people didn't have this hormone, their bodies would get very confused and wouldn't understand whether they needed to sleep or not. That would mean insomnia for many people. But we would still be able to survive. We'd have two options – to build giant submarines and go down into the depths of the ocean closer to Earth's core, or stay on the surface, living our lives in some location where we'd have sources of geothermal energy – in Iceland, for example. We could also settle near volcanoes. Their heat would be enough to warm us for a long time. Our vision would adapt to the dark, but at some point, it would reach its maximum. So we'd need to get used to living in complete darkness. But who knows? Maybe we would adapt to this life, too. So, which option would you prefer? Living at the bottom of the ocean in a submarine or on the surface near volcanoes? If the sun decided to stop producing light, then the animals in the wild would be the first to notice. Most animals need daytime to roam from place to place, especially in the large savannas in Africa. Zebras, wildebeests, and giraffes all need the day to move to avoid predators. As soon as the sun goes down, it's their bedtime. If the sun suddenly went dark, animals wouldn't comprehend what was going on and would simply become an early lunch for predators. Nocturnal creatures would be equally confused at the time change. Birds usually flock during the day, so we wouldn't hear or see any of them. We have them to thank for eating pests in the sky. Well, them and bats. But if you're in an area with no bats, then consider the insects to be the winners here. Temperatures would start to drop gradually. Humans would notice the effects as well. We're used to having the sun shining at the peak of noon. But with the sunshine's disappearance, we would be living in total darkness. It'd just be a matter of survival. If the sun suddenly got dark, then we'd only have around eight minutes to enjoy the rest of it. 
That's because it takes that much time for sunlight to travel thousands of miles across the solar system. We would have to use UV lights to grow some crops, but it wouldn't be enough to feed the whole world. Not to mention the dropping temperatures across the world. Survival would be difficult in the open plain. Everyone would have to duck inside shelters and warm bunkers. Plants need photosynthesis to grow. Without it, we wouldn't have any crops. Bread wouldn't exist, since it needs wheat. Even the algae in the oceans need photosynthesis to survive, which is the highest source of oxygen rather than forests. This means oxygen levels would start to deplete. Large bodies of water like lakes, oceans, and seas would also start to lack oxygen to sustain marine life. One of our main sources of vitamin D is the sun. There are other ways of getting it, but the sun is the best and most convenient way. Without crops or vegetation, all the herbivores would have to rummage for the last green grass on land or a leaf hanging from a tree. They would soon run out of food, which would also be bad news for us humans, since we need animals like cows, horses, and sheep for our livelihoods. This wouldn't happen overnight. Of course, the oceans would remain warm for some time, but eventually, they would get cold and freeze. Earth is still a planet powered by an iron core that produces so much heat. This would not be enough to keep the planet warm. Our next step would be finding the right shelter and keeping warm. If this happened overnight, then chances are there wouldn't be any ready-made bunkers for a scenario like this. Unless you're watching this video and decide to build one after. They would have to provide heat 24-7 and be capable of growing crops under UV light. Solar-powered facilities would be a thing of the past. People would have to wear sustainable suits when venturing out into the open. Since it would be so dark, we would need strong lights or powerful night vision goggles to see anything. The lands would be desolate. Nocturnal creatures that can handle freezing temperatures would take it over. Structures would collapse since there would be oxygen depletion. Concrete needs oxygen to remain intact. The bunkers themselves would have limited oxygen as well. We would need to uproot many trees and place them under strong UV lights for them to produce oxygen. In turn, it would produce its ecosystem in the large underground bunkers. The oceans on the surface would freeze over eventually. Gathering any natural resources from the ocean floor, like gas or oil, would be impossible. The large object, which used to be a bright and sunny star, would still be floating around. But what would happen if the sun disappeared overnight? Well, pretty much the same thing, except way worse. The sun is the largest celestial object in our solar system, which keeps all of our planets lined up the way they are. They orbit around the sun, minding their own business. Without such a large object keeping them steady, the planets would start to float around randomly. Some might even collide with each other. In other cases, the planets would just float around and fly off into space eventually, until they found a new star to orbit around. Earth might or might not be one of those planets. Our planet would still be dark. We would be flying through space at an unusual speed. The planet wouldn't rotate on itself, and many objects would crash into us. We'd be in the trajectory line of mass comets waiting to strike us down. The threat of the cold wouldn't be a major factor anymore. It would be what's beyond us. This means we'd have to dig our bunkers deeper. We wouldn't have an atmosphere anymore to trap any form of heat or anything. We would be floating for an eternity. But let's go back to that scenario where the sun just decided to go dark. Don't worry, our planet would still be orbiting the sun along with the other planets. The temperatures would keep plummeting until nothing could survive on the surface. It would be total darkness 24-7. Only bacteria and possibly tardigrades could survive on the surface. Tardigrades are microscopic critters that can survive just about anything, including outer space. Eventually, oxygen would be absent from the Earth's surface, and there wouldn't be anything up there anymore except for them. Since they would be the dominant and possibly the only creatures on the surface, they'd manage to evolve into bigger species and produce many more. Hundreds of thousands of years into the future, humans would have had to evolve to the conditions underground. Our eyes would be much bigger to take up as much light as possible. Our skin would become whiter 
since there would be no sun underground. Our hearing would also be much more sensitive, since the underground would create echoing sounds. We'd still have the intellect we do now, but our bodies would be ready for the surface. The main threat would be the giant tardigrades, sluggishly dragging themselves around. Under a microscope, they look kind of cute, but imagine them the size of a polar bear. Still want something like this in your backyard? They can live anywhere, so they'd infiltrate the bunkers now and then. They'd get ferocious and come in different sizes and shapes. At this point, humans would not be the dominant species, since they'd have to hide underground. Some tardigrades from different tribes wouldn't be friendly with each other. Major cities that used to be bustling with people would be home to giant water bears. Tardigrades are known as water bears since they kind of look like little bears. But these beasts with eight legs would be much bigger than them. Bears and most animals would have been wiped out on the surface. Under the ice, some deep sea creatures would thrive and have moved closer to the surface. These animals were used to living in darkness away from the sun. But over thousands of years of dominating the waters, they'd have grown to enormous sizes. Some of these creatures would adapt to crawling out of the mainland. Even though the surface would be frozen, they'd still find ways to crack through the ice and make their way. Humans, meanwhile, would create large underground channels and networks, building cities and colonies. We'd dominate the tunnels where our hands and feet would grow to become web-like and large. We take over everything underground and remain the smartest species on Earth. We'd manage to keep old art pieces from the surface and important records to stay as human as possible. We'd keep on surviving no matter what. More than one million Earths can fit in our sun. New research shows that between 20% to 35% of suns eat their own planets, and a quarter of planetary systems orbiting stars like the sun had a chaotic past. The very thing that gives life can also take it away. All the planets in our solar system revolve around the Sun, and they all do it in a somewhat consistent way. It's most likely that they stayed that way ever since they first came into the picture, but not all of them. This chaotic existence means that a solar system had a lot of planets in the litter until the host Sun decided to melt them away. Our solar system is panned out perfectly so that no planet's gravity interferes with each other. The gravitational force on Jupiter is a lot tougher than Earth's, which means that if Earth gets close to Jupiter, we'd be another moon for Jupiter. The planet is so big that if Earth were the size of a grape, Jupiter would be the size of a basketball compared to it. Even with the best technology in the world, it's difficult to tell if stars do, in fact, eat their planets. The best way to study this is to observe binary systems. That's just a sciencey way of saying a system with two stars orbiting each other. Usually, the two stars were formed around the same time, from the same gases, and the same conditions. It means they should contain the same elements, more or less. When you open your eyes in the morning, the sunlight that's been traveling for millions of miles greets you. The closer we get to it, the hotter it is. But the rays traveling from the sun also contain certain chemicals that make it unique. The chemicals that are associated with the sun are light materials like oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and helium. You can find some other stuff in it too, but these are the main ones. By studying these elements, you can learn the history of a solar system with enough detail to determine if it was chaotic or smooth. Scientists studied 107 binary systems composed of suns like ours by analyzing the light. Since each system contains two suns, they compared and contrasted them to see the differences. They observed the stars with a thin outer layer, having different elements than their companion. All suns contain light elements, but there are some that have rocky elements, like iron, silicon, and titanium near the sun. These elements are associated with rough terrains that you'd find on the surface, but they're out there floating in the middle of space. The thinnest outer layer is especially rich in iron compared to the other layers. Many stars are twins at birth. Even most of the Milky Way stars have a buddy in a binary system. It means our sun is pretty unique for not having a partner. But there are some theories out there that suggest that the sun may have lost its twin in the past. It's around 184 light years away and is called HD 186302. 
and this might be our lucky star. A stellar nursery is where thousands of stars are born. They're made up of gas and dust that gradually collapse under their own weight. Our sun may have started in such a way 4.6 billion years ago. And when they're mature enough, they go out into the open, usually with their travel buddy. Actually, scientists claim that up to 85% of all stars could be in binary pairs or have more buddies, but over 50% are dual pairs. The only problem is that we can't really see it since it strayed from its original orbit an eternity ago. But traces of it can be found in the Oort cloud. That's the vast cluster of space consisting of comets, space rocks, and ice in the outer edges of our sun's reach. They float around quite a lot since they're far off the sun's gravity and can easily be knocked out of their orbit into open space. Flying through such a space is no different than flying through any random void of space. The reason why some of these light elements in space contain rock elements you'd find on the surface of a planet is because the sun knocked them off their orbit and devoured them as they got closer. It also happens when a star becomes too big in its place and starts eating everything around it. According to scientists, if a star eats a planet, it can make it go chaotic and spin so quickly that it eventually rips apart. But don't worry, there's a very low chance of the sun devouring the planet in the near future. Stars are formed when a huge cloud of hydrogen and helium grows until it collapses under its own weight. The pressure increases and reaches extreme heat levels we can't even measure. Eventually, the hydrogen atoms lose their electrons, causing the hydrogen to fuse together and release energy, countering the gravity collapsing. But when the gravitational force overpowers the hydrogen fusion, the star begins to expand and becomes a red giant. And then, after around a billion years, the hydrogen in the outer core will go away, leaving plenty of helium hanging around, which will fuse with the rest of the elements around. And once all the helium disappears, gravity will shrink the red giant into a white dwarf. And when it's completely gone, the remains of the star release tons of gas and dust into space. Scientists claim that our sun has between 7 to 8 billion years left before it reaches that stage. But even if that becomes a reality, it wouldn't happen overnight. Something like this takes millions of years to take place. But what if the sun decided to devour us overnight as we speak? The planet would start feeling hot in seconds. Every slight degree change can lead to some catastrophic events. Ice caps can melt in a matter of seconds and flood the coastal lands. Even little islands in remote areas of the world will be submerged. And as it gets hotter, every snow-capped area will melt instantly and turn into desert-like climates. Some places will burn and your everyday objects will melt on the spot. The Earth's interior will also get hotter, allowing volcanic eruptions to happen across the world. Antarctica will melt from the heat as well as the volcanoes erupting inside. And just in a matter of minutes, the whole planet will turn into fire and ash before it explodes into tiny bits floating in space, reaching areas we've never even heard of. But no worries, something like this won't really happen. In case the sun knocks us off our rotation, the results would be different. It'll also get hot because the magnetic field around us protects us from the sun's radiation and once we get knocked out of place, the magnetic field gets tarnished, and the extreme heat from the sun will boil us. The gravitational force will be unstable, so the physics of our everyday life will be chaotic. We'll have to wait five billion years from now when the sun turns into a red giant. It'll grow in size, eventually eating up Mercury and Venus. Chances are, Earth will also be on the menu. If Earth were to move only 900,000 miles closer to the sun, then it would be uninhabitable. It may seem like a lot, but it's only four times the distance between the moon and Earth. Detecting the chemical composition of the sun rays in solar systems that are further away could help scientists find other Earth-like planets. Since the atmosphere around these planet-eating stars changes the chemical composition, we can detect which solar systems out there have had a calm past. The main thing we have to observe is if the planets have a healthy orbit cycle. With nothing else getting in the way, we can assume that the planet could follow the same steps as Earth did for humans to be here. 
But this process will take ages, since there are millions of nearby stars similar to our Sun. The odds of finding a planet similar to ours are near impossible at this rate. But if so, then there might be life on those planets. There will be no way of knowing if it's intelligent life, but they might have had the same evolutionary fate as us.